My name is Levi Totis and I'm a mechatronics engineer here at Interbotics. My role as mechatronics engineer is to design the electromechanical parts of our products. So I do a lot of work in CAD to design the individual parts um, and to figure out how to manufacture them, so whether it's laser cutting or 3D printing, um, and to figure out how all the parts, the brackets, the servos get put together to form the final product. My first task for this project was placing the servo horns, which serve as the rotational points for each joint, into some common sense measurements. As engineers, we like round numbers, and the previous model had no real rhyme or reason as to where each joint was placed. So I designed and built a new body that would have some better measurements to make our lives a little bit easier. Another goal for the Mark IV is to give it a very cool visual design. On the previous models, everything was unshelled and there was a lot of raw electronics and brackets that were exposed. This time around, we're creating 3D printed shells uh, with the F117 Nighthawk as inspiration. So it's got lots of sharp curves and edges and we're 3D printing. So that gives us a lot of freedom to design visually and it also gives us the ability to use robust rubber toes that we can screw in. Another very cool addition that I'm making to the robot is using NeoPixel LEDs as multicolored eyes for the bot. They have a great wow factor, but they also serve functionally as a robot state indicator so that they can tell the user what current gate the robot is using, uh, when there's too much stress on the motors or even as sensor output. Electronics and wiring is its own animal to tame. During R&D, we don't really care where the wires go and how much of a mess they make, but at the end of the day, we need a finished product where the wires aren't sticking out everywhere. In the case of the Hexapod, this is what the power harness currently looks like, but we have to get it into something that is assembly friendly and manufacturable friendly. We also had to design a new PCB to serve as the power hub for this robot, so it would facilitate connection between six legs, as well as the pan and tilt servo, as well as a communication line to the U2D2. So that meant creating a new eight port hub. My name is Solomon and I'm the lead ROS engineer here at Innerbotics and I'm in charge of writing all the software that we see on our robots. I was tasked with creating a ROS compatible version of our hexapod that we're calling the Mark IV that would be geared specifically at researchers. It would be developed on a Raspberry Pi and could be controlled using a PS4 controller over Bluetooth. Instead of going with the robotics board on the new Hexapod, we decided to use the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, running Ubuntu Mate and ROS Melodic. So the nice things about the Raspberry Pi is that it has a lot more processing power and also a lot more RAM than the robotics board. It also has Wi-Fi support. So it's very easy as a researcher to develop code on your own personal computer and then be able to command the Hexapod remotely without actually being tethered to it uh, to get your project working. The Arbotics board worked on a old community library that works mainly with Protocol 1 based servos. Uh, the Hexapod that we're using works on Protocol 2, so we're using a low-level API called the Dynamics Workbench Toolbox created by Robotis in conjunction with the U2D2 to actually control our servos. When Matt told me to design the Mark IV Hexapod, he mentioned that it would be a first in a family of Hexapods. So one of the things that I had to think about while designing the code was to make it modular enough so that no matter what the size or the leg proportions or what X-series servo was being used in the Hexapod, the code would be able to work just as well. My code just parses this URDF file, which is specific for each type of hexapod, and based on that is able to get all the measurements and leg proportions that it needs for that specific hexapod and to do the right math that's involved. The way the gates were controlled in the Mark III hexapod was using a community-based repository called the Phoenix Code. So I decided it would be just easier for me to develop my own solution, which would take the same amount of time. I was able to get the tripod, ripple, and wave walking gates to work, and I was also able to make the hexapod translate and rotate in place. One of the features was being able to independently move each of the hexapod's legs. For example, you might be in an environment where the hexapod would need to probe something, 
maybe even pick something up. I developed a custom Python API that researchers could use that abstracts away all that inverse kinematics and internal plumbing. This way, researchers can focus on their machine learning code and on their ROS projects and not have to deal with our plumbing code. While working on the project, Matt challenged me with creating an adaptive gate that would make the hexapod able to walk on uneven terrain. We brainstormed a bit and we thought about putting four sensors or switches on the bottom of the hexapod's feet, but then I came up with the idea of taking advantage of the current sensor functionality of the X-series servos on the hexapod to do the exact same thing. So I tested it and I was actually successful in getting it to work. And this will just be one of the demos that we release with our hexapod and it'd be very interesting to see how researchers build from that.